What on earth does Siri have to do with Final Cut Pro? Well, these are my thoughts on the current situation and your comments on last week's documentary and oh boy, it ruffled some feathers, didn't it? Firstly, thank you so much for your fantastic feedback. The video went above and beyond what I could ever imagine. And thank you also for so many unique insights in the comments. One of the things I read overwhelmingly often is how emotionally connected you guys are to Final Cut Pro. And this says so much. But don't let your emotions take over too much. In the comments I read more than often that you are disappointed in Apple seeing Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve in Apple Keynotes, as if they wouldn't stand behind Final Cut Pro. I have to intervene here. I do not share this opinion at all. At the end of the day, Apple is a hardware company that wants to sell as many Macs as possible. Of course, Apple wants the DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro crowd to use and probably more importantly to buy their Macs. So I think you shouldn't get hung up on this. I also think that Apple has a very beneficial relationship with DaVinci Resolve, but more on that in a bit. Another recurring argument for your disappointment was that DaVinci Resolve was on the iPad before Final Cut Pro was. But let's do ourselves a favor and have a little reality check. Blackmagic Design put DaVinci Resolve on the iPad almost entirely as is. They didn't re-engineer the user interface or anything. On the other hand, Final Cut Pro on the iPad is an entirely different experience. It's meant to be there without a mouse and a keyboard. Apple clearly has a plan for the iPad and macOS being on there doesn't seem to be a part of that plan. So re-engineering Final Cut Pro from the ground up to make use of the touch interface makes perfect sense to me. What doesn't make perfect sense is gatekeeping and elitism. I know, I know, haters gonna hate, but I want to put emphasis on what Matthew said in the video. The definition of pro has of course changed over the years as all of these tools have democratized something that had, you know, gatekeepers that held the gates closed, you know, pretty strongly. You are missing the bigger picture if you only consider somebody a professional if they're involved in extensive post-production workflows. YouTubers, content creators, and indie filmmakers are pulling more views than some broadcasters combined. Whether you like it or not, the industry has changed. Another argument along those lines was that we are blatantly wrong. Updating and adding features to Final Cut Pro wouldn't solve anything. Real pros would need to be able to trust Apple. But here's the thing, if Apple doesn't communicate anything, updates, housekeeping and features are the things that can restore trust. Or from another perspective, why do people trust Blackmagic with DaVinci Resolve? Food for thought. And the elephant in the room? Aperture. Well, here's what we know. Richard Taylor reported that the Final Cut Pro team said this during the Final Cut Pro Creative Summit 2023. Not only do we have plans for Final Cut Pro for the next six months, we have plans for the next five to six years. Also, Apple said, Final Cut Pro is an active development and is not going down Aperture's path. Beautiful, isn't it? Additionally, I want to remind you that there are plenty of neural cores inside Apple Silicon devices, and they are mostly unused for anything Final Cut Pro. But they must be there for something, right? Do you remember a thing called Siri? The sheer horsepower of Apple Silicon for anything AI is something we should consider here. Speech to text is already in the core operating systems, from the Mac to the iPhone. But something like the elaborate integration of a large language model of some sort is not something that's happening in Final Cut Pro first. Neither is it something that the Final Cut Pro team will develop. If it hasn't been already, the core implementation of on-device speech-to-text will be developed higher up at Apple. Then the Final Cut Pro team will take it and integrate it into Final Cut Pro, which is their field of expertise. I think we will see text-based editing in Final Cut Pro once we see an overhaul of Siri. Always remember, Apple rarely comes early to a party, but if they show up, they usually kick ass. Final Cut Pro is the most reliable NLE, and I want it to stay that way. Therefore, I'm willing to wait a little longer to see features implemented how they should be. Does that mean I'm okay with the glacial pace of development of Final Cut over the last couple of months or years? No. Of course not. But 10.7's introduction of the scrolling timeline has confirmed my gut feeling that we have been heard. The iPad version is out of the door and the team can focus on housekeeping and amazing updates now. Business-wise, it made sense to introduce the iPad version too. Final Cut Pro for the iPad being a subscription financially justifies the active development of Final Cut Pro and the Prestige app on the Mac can stay a one-time purchase. 
However, I wouldn't mind paying another 300 bucks for version 11 or something. Additionally, Final Cut Pro for the iPad is a fantastic middle ground. You have iMovie on iOS and Mac, then you have Final Cut Pro for the iPad, and then you have Final Cut Pro for the Mac. Circling back to the beginning of the video, I said that Apple has a beneficial partnership with Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve. I said that because I think Apple has no intention to be where DaVinci Resolve currently is. And this is fine. Does that mean I'm arguing that Final Cut Pro should stay as is? No, of course not. Final Cut Pro will evolve. But I think Apple has positioned itself and Final Cut exactly there, where we imagine the changed definition of Pro to be. What do you think? Am I way off? Matthew just shared his thoughts about Apple intending to be at the upper echelon of Pro Video software and that they could reintroduce Final Cut Studio. I have linked his video in the video description below. 